The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host. Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OA, host of the last few brain cells, and the host of Between Taramina's and Oriented with Television. Like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Oriented with Television. A lot to look at this week here on the pod. Of course, we have started spring sports, um, soccer, a lot of soccer talk, obviously. Um, we also got talking enrollment list, obviously. So let's break everything down here. Obviously, um, not a lot from the world of football. Um, you know, especially the coaching searches at Pontiac and Avondale. Um, we haven't heard much about that. Um, so those are some real interesting um, developments. I mean, we haven't heard anything from any of the coaching searches there. Um, also, let's look at, um, obviously, the big story has to be, um, you know, when you look at, let's look at soccer. I mean, obviously, we talk soccer. Um, you know, the um, I know Dan Stickrat, um, he does a really good job with the top um, – 25 in the state a lot of OA representation in the um in the rankings I mean obviously Rochester ranked number two um Troy Athens is ranked in there Adams is in there Stony Creek is in there um when you look at Rochester I think I think this could be their chance I mean obviously you look at last year with Bloopia Hills coming out of nowhere winning a state title in division one that kind of says a lot where um where they're at and it'll be very interesting to see how um how um Rochester does especially making the state semifinals a year ago just couldn't get the job done against um you know following the Northville and Northville ended up um winning the um you know Northville ended up following the Bloomby Hills I mean like so but I'm curious to see how um you know Northville is one of the top teams ranked in soccer right now um uh, but Rochester, for sure. I mean, obviously, we talk about them. I mean, you talk, obviously, it starts and ends with the Roch- with the girls' basketball connection over there at Rochester. Um, Alice Max and goal. You have, um, of course, you have um, Natalie Race. You have Ava Williams. Um, you know, they got several others that are really good as well um, over there at Rochester. Um, they're a very good team. I mean, there's no doubt about it. They're, they're a very, very good, efficient team. Um, and I think they're going to do some damage, um, coming up. And I think that's something to really watch for. Um, when you look at Rochester, I mean, Troy Athens, um, they looked good the other night. I think they played Howell, um, one five nil. Um, I think they're another team to really watch for. Um, they, their district's very interesting. It's very favorable. Um, I also think you look at Adams. I mean, Adams, we know how tough they are. They're always competitive. Stony Creek's another team that's very competitive. Um, you know, when you look at, of course, the Red is not an easy division. I'll tell you that much right now. Um, even with um, Stony Creek knocking off Olympia Hills early on in the year to start off the league play. Um, and of course, we're in the, we're just about in the start of league play, obviously, here. I mean, like, you really got to look at with the divisions. I mean, of course, in the blue, you got to look at West Bloomfield. Um Avondale may be a threat in that division there. Um, the white, I think it's even Steven. Um, Grove, Seaholm, maybe Lake Orion's in that conversation. Um, and then the red, of course, we know that division. We know that's a kiss of death. Um, Blue Bay Hills, let's not forget last year, that team was last place. It was 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 um set, was was tied for last, and they didn't want to stay title. I mean, that says a lot to how um that division is, I mean, when you really look at it. Um, so right now, when I look at it here, Bloomby Hill's off to that um, towards start right now. I mean, uh, sorry, um, Rochester's off to that great start right now. And I think, you know, when you look at it at the end of the day here, Rochester, you know, when you look at the postseason, obviously that district over at Swinehart's the kiss of death. I mean, you obviously got the three Rochesters. You got Lake Orion, Utica, Eisenhower, um, Utica. Um, you need to go forward. That's not going to be an easy district. I mean, I think whoever wins that district's got a great shot to win it all. I, I, I think that. And I honestly think that. Um, when you look at soccer, I mean, like, obviously, you know, you got to look at, of course, the divisions, obviously. I mean, like, 
what teams impress you, what teams don't. I mean, like that's what it's going to come down to is, you know, that's what it's going to always come down to. And, you know, bottom line is, you know, we're going to see what happens. Um, let's go to some so- Let's go to baseball. Obviously, when you look at baseball, um, I think when you look at the red right now, it kind of comes down to Adams. It's going to be a good division. I mean, Adams, Lake Orion, West Bluefield, Rochester, Clarkston, Stony Creek. Um, you know, I still think, you know, when you look at Adams, obviously you have Bo Pico brothers. Um, that says a lot. Um, obviously Lake Orion, we know how good they're, how good and balanced that, that team is. Um, and then of course you have West Bluefield, West Bluefield. I know, um, talking to a good friend of mine, um, name is Tim English and, you know, he responded to me, watch for West Bluefield and, I agree with them. I mean, they're a dark horse team in that district, and I think they're going to be a dark horse team in the division. And the bottom line is, when I look at West Bloomfield, um, they got the talent. They got the playmakers. Um, they can do some significant damage. I mean, when you look at West Bloomfield, I mean, like, they could seriously contend. I mean, that's how good they are. Um... I still think when you look at the white division, you still got Groves there. You got, you know, North Farmington's there. Um, it'll be interesting to see. I think, you know, when you look at a team like Groves, um, you know, I, I like how they're coached. I like how they're balanced. I mean, Seahome's another team that's balanced. Um, I, I just think when you look at, and then, of course, you look at, you know, and I forgot to mention Oxford, who's in the red for baseball. Um, we know how well, we know how they are. Um, so I, I think when you look at it, bottom line is, you know, when you look at baseball divisions, obviously, um, it's going to come down to, I think, it's going to come down to, I think, what battle of, you know, when you look at the red, I, I still think that division's like Orioles to lose, but keep an eye on West Bluebit, keep an eye on Adams. Um, I can't trust Clarkston. Rochester's hard to trust. Um, when you look at baseball, um, the white, I, I think Groves, is, I think Groves, that, div, that they're going to be a team to beat. I think Groves is solid. Um, Bloopy Hills could be another team that's solid as well. Um, so that'd be very interesting to watch. And then, of course, you know, in the blue, um, I'll be very curious to see how, um, you know, Harper Woods does, Kiersey Southfield does, um, you know, you got Troy, Troy Athens, Avondale. I mean, Avondale's been a team that, you know, they've been they've been up and down. They've been, they've been in some games. I mean, Troy Athens has been in some games this year, um, high scoring games. So, really curious to see how um this will work out, particularly when you look at the baseball side of things. Um, I just think bottom line is, um, when you look at baseball, you got to look at a course, you know. Baseball is a hard game to project. It always has been. I mean, it always has been really hard to project. Um, you know, you don't know what teams are going to win. You know, when you look at playing three game series, I'm curious to see because I think it's Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays, I believe, is when these games are played, um, which I think is really interesting. I mean, you know, playing one game at, um, you know, two at, at a host site, then one at the opposite site, um, which is interesting. I mean, I'm curious to see how this format's going to work. Um, curious to see how the red's going to look, obviously. Um, just a lot to look at when you look at the baseball side of things. I mean, you know, I, I, I just think bottom line is, you know, when you look at the OA right now in general, and I mean, like, you know, I still think that this division is going to be um is um I still think the best team in this league. I mean, you got Lake Orange a solid team, Adams a solid team, West Bloomfield a solid team. I think those are the three top teams right now um in the um OA when it comes to baseball. And I think this is gonna be I think it's gonna be where it goes, I think, the rest of the year. I mean, so we're gonna see what happens. I mean, obviously, you know, that's something to really talk about. Um, as we had later into the year, um, obviously there. Um, softball. Um, when you look at softball, um, 
I think when you look at softball, I think it starts and ends with Clarkston. And the people and people say, well, why Clarkston? I mean, yeah, Clarkston's been the perennial power in softball. I mean, they've been they've been really good. Um, they've been I mean, they haven't had some of the greatest of years lately, but they got a very good player in Kira Tomey. Um, we know the accolade that she's had, the Central Michigan commit. Um I just think they're going to be as good as Kira Tomey takes them. Um, I also think Adams is another team. I really think they keep an eye on because when you look at Rochester Adams, um, last year, this was a team that came out of nowhere and shocked a lot of people. I mean, they had an almost improbable run. I mean, they shocked. I mean, they went and shocked, um, you know, Lake Orion in the regional semifinals. Um, I know they went and shocked um, their district when they won that one. I didn't expect them to beat a team like Rochester or Stony Creek last year. I mean, that was that came out of nowhere. Nobody expected that. Um, I also think, you know, when you look at other teams, um, Ferndale's another team I'm high on um, in softball. I think that the Eagles, the way that tradition they have played, they played really well, well, better under the radar. And I think nobody talks about the Eagles when it comes to softball. I mean, baseball, kind of the same thing with them. I mean, nobody talks about Ferndale. You know I mean? I think they're sneaky good. Um, I think they got a good chance to do some damage, particularly in softball this year. Um, they can make a district run. I mean, I'm, I think they're that good. Um, I think the Eagles are that good. I mean, the question is going to be is for Ferndale is, can they play more tough competition? That's the big question that I have for them. Um, obviously, when you look at Seaholmes, Seaholmes is another one. Groves is always solid. Bloompy Hills is solid. West Bloompy is another one that's solid. Um, I think North Farmington could surprise some people this year. Um, obviously, when you look at the Raiders, um, they're a good team. I mean, they're a really good team. I mean, like... I know what Coach Jeff Simpson, of course, he has a coach at the girls' basketball team at um, North Farmington. Um, he's done a good job with that program. Um, I think the Raiders, they could surprise some people. Um, we're going to see how this goes with them. I mean, the bottom line is with North Farmington, um, I just think they're going to be solid. I mean... Troy, it's kind of hard to trust them, especially Coach Laura Guzman. Um, we're going to see how this goes with them. I mean, you know, I'm just, you know, when you look at Troy, I, I think they're going to be solid. Um, Troy Athens, another team that's solid. Um, so when you look at, and then, of course, you look at, of course, Harper Woods, another team to watch. Um, but when I look at the division, Overall, I mean, like, I still think when you look at softball, Clarkson's the team to beat. I mean, they're honestly, Clarkson's the team to beat, obviously. And I think the bottom line is, you know, when you look at, when you look at the Wolves this year, I, I think, I think they're the best bet out of anybody to make a run. I, I just think Clarkson is, they're going to be a tough out, um, out of anybody. I, I just think bottom line is. When you look at Clarkston, I mean, like, they're a team to really, really watch for. I mean, you know, I mean, people are going to say, well, what about Lake Orion? I mean, Lake Orion, they got the pitching. Um, they got an off, they got a good offense, a solid offense. Um, but when I look at the Dragons, I, I just think that, you know, when you look at Lake Orion, I mean, they, they're balanced enough. I mean, like I said, I haven't seen a lot of Lake Orion softball. Um, I mean, they're they're a good team. I mean, clearly they're on the way up. Um, really curious to see can they make some noise. That's the big question that I have with the Dragons is can they make that next jump up? And I know Coach Joe White Terra very well, and that's the big question. I mean, you look at obviously, and then of course there's Oxford. I mean, Oxford, you know, I think that's another team. I think that I don't think a lot of people pay attention to. I mean, they've always been. A solid program and I think that when I look at Oxford you know they could be very good I mean bottom line is you know when you look at Oxford I, I just think that they're going to be a team 
that can make a ton of noise this year. I mean, that's my take on it here uh, when you look at Oxford. Um, okay, now let's go to track and field. Um, obviously, when you look at track, um, you know, this is, of course, it's very interesting. A lot of storylines this year in track. Um, let's go boys first. I mean, obviously, when you look at the guys this year, you know, you look at, obviously, you look at Farmington. You got to look at, I think Farmington's going to be very good this year. Um, I mean, people look at Oak Park. Oak Park was not the same team last year as they were in years past, and that's really un, uneasy, unusual. Um, Lake Orion's going through a, um, a whole big transition um, going from Coach For Sanford to Andrew McDonald. Um, it'll be very interesting to see how that transition is going to be over at Lake Orion. Um, Oxford, I think, I think when you look at the red right now, um, you know, I think Oxford to me is the team to beat in this division for a couple of reasons. I mean, they got a lot of balance. They got a lot of experience. Um, we know how good their throws is. We know they got their distance is really improved. I mean, their sprinting has been really good. I mean, I mean, you look at, of course, I think Oxford's a scary team. Adams is always scary as well. I mean, when you look at what they got um, with the Highlanders, I think Adams could be a team to really watch for going forward there. Um, of course, I think Lake Orion right now is probably like the third best team right now um, in the boys' side. Um, and then you have Farmington, and then, of course, you have, um, you know, then you have Rochester, and then, of course, um, you know, I mean, like, they have Rochester. Um, so... It's interesting because you got, and I mean Clarkson. I mean Clarkson's another team. They're on the way up, but I'm curious to see how this division's going to go, uh, particularly in this in the red. I mean, obviously, I think Oxford and Adams are the two top teams in this division. Um, on the white, I mean, on the white, you got Bloomby Hills, you got Stony Creek. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, I mean, because they base the divisions based on geo. Geographic, um, you got Ad I got Pontiac, you got Troy, Troy, Athens. Um, I think this is going to be an interesting division because Troy, we know, is very Troy should be Troy's solid. Um, you but you got Stony Creek there, you got Bloopy Hills there. Um, curious to see how this is going to go. And then you have Avondale and Pontiac, of course, Avondale, we know, is very athletic, very competitive. Um, Pontiac, you know, they've had their ups and downs, um, you know, most of, I mean, like, so I'm curious to see how those two teams are going to compete in this division. Um, really curious to see the blue. I think it's loaded. I mean, obviously got West Bloomfield, Grove, Seahome, North Farmington. Um, when you look at this division, um, it's, it's interesting. I mean. I think Berkeley's in this division. I think it's here. I think Berkeley and Royal Oak are in the gold. So, but I think when you look at this division, it's a tough division. I mean, West Bloomfield, we know how good they are. We know how good Farmington is. We know how good um, we know how good Oak Park is. We know how good that um, you know it. I mean, like, and that's a loaded regional when you look at it. But in a division like this, you know, you got Farmington there. You got Grove, Sea Home, Sea Home, well known for the distance. Um, they're gonna do some damage, and you know I'm very curious to see how this is gonna go in the Gold Division. You got Harper Woods, Oak Park, I think Berkeley Royal Oak are in this division. Um, Ferndale, I think Ferndale and Ferndale U, I think they both have two different teams. Um, but when I look at this division here, um, Oak Park is still favored in the division. I still think Royal Oak's got a little bit more balance. I mean, I think Berkeley's a tough team. Um, but I'm curious to see what happens. I mean, really curious to see how this plays out, how everything plays out in boys track and field. Because, you know, you have the change of the guard at Lake Orion. You have, I think Oxford's emerging. I think Adams is emerging. I think that... um. You know, I'm curious to see what Oak Park does. I mean, there's a lot of storylines here in this league, considering that, you know, when you look at track and field um, on the boys' side, you know, just a lot of curiosity, you know, heading into the year 
to see who is going to be very good. And I think that's something to really watch for there as we go forward there. Um, let's go now from the boys' side. Let's go to the girls now. Um, Oak Park. People are going to say, obviously, when you look at the Knights, um, they're one of the favorites this year to win a state title in girls track and field. Yes, they're not the deepest of teams, but they're always well-rounded. Um, even though they don't, it's hard to trust them because they're field events, but they're sprinting, they're hurdles. They're very good. Um, and then you look at, um, and then of course you look at, um, you know, when you look at Oxford, Oxford's going to be a team ranked pretty high this year. Um, they got balance. They got depth everywhere. Um, really a team I'm high on to keep an eye on. I think this year is the Wildcats with the talent they got back. Um, so I'll be curious to see what happens there with Oxford. I mean, like, I just think that, you know, when you look at them, I think Oxford's on the way up when you look at with the Wildcats. Um, Adams, we know how good they are. Um, Clarkston, I am very curious to see with them because when you look at Clarkston and the last few years, this has not been the prototypical dominant Clarkston team we've seen in the past. And that's mind-boggling. I still remember a couple of years ago when I announced um, with Ian Locke um, a track meet when Lake Orion took on Clarkson. It was a couple of years ago. But I was shocked how Lake Orion beat Clarkson. I mean, because I thought it'd be a closer meet. I didn't expect, you know, what I saw with Clarkson. I mean, the question for me is, is Clarkson back to being Clarkson? That's the big question I have with the Wolves. They're a well-coached team, obviously. I'm very curious to see what happens here with them. Um, Lake Orion. Um, obviously, the, ch the changeover from um, Coach Sanford to Andrew McDonald. Um, very curious to see. I mean, they're a young team this year. Um, I think they're going to get better in time. I mean, like, I, I think with the Dragons, you know, you know, they're going to compete, um, you know, but they've got some building blocks. You know, they got some building, they got some pieces. Um, I think the next two years are going to be very good, but they're going to be young this year. I mean, they're going to be very young this year. Rochester, um, I think they're going to be okay. I think they're going to be solid. Um, we'll see what happens there at Rochester. Um, curious to see what happens there with them. Um, in the white, um, I still think, you know, when you look at Troy, Troy's going to be solid this year in the girls. They've always been solid. I mean, they've always had enough production to do well. I mean, they have, they, they have enough pieces. Um, then you look at, of course, Bloomfield Hills. We know Bloomfield Hills, they're what they're more than capable of. Um, and then of course you look at, um, and then also you look at um, Stony Creek. Stony Creek, we know what type of team they are. I mean, they're a solid team. Um, then, you know, Troy Athens has been up and down. Um, Avondale, you know, they got athletes as always. I'm curious to see. And then Pontiac, they've always had, you know, I'm curious to see what Pontiac, how they do this year. Really curious. Um, but when I look at the white, I think it's going to come down to, I think it's going to come down to Troy, Bloopy Hills, and Stony Creek. Um, for that division. And I think that's going to be really interesting to watch. Um, especially with how good that division's going to be. Um, and then let's go to, um, let's look at, um, the blue division. You got, you got West Bloomfield, Grove, Seahome, Farmington, North Farmington. Um, Seahome, I think is going to be the team to beat because, the distance there, yes, it's not the same as been in years past, but it's still Seahome. They're a good team. West Bloomfield, we know they got the sprinters. Farmington's a solid team. They're going to be tough for anybody. Um, you know, North Farmington is the wild card and all this. So we'll see what happens there with them. Um, and then... Um, in the gold division, you got Harper Woods, Berkeley, Royal Oak, um, Oak Park. Um, as I mentioned, Oak Park. I mean, you got Ferndale, Ferndale University. 
Um, Oak Park, we know, is a team to beat. They're loaded with talent. Um, Berkeley at Royal Oak could definitely give them problems. I think the Ravens could definitely give Oak Park problems, especially with balance. Um, you know, and depth, I think that'll be very interesting. Berkeley's another team I think could give them problems. So I'm curious to see how that one goes with them. Um, so when you look at this in Harper Woods, we don't know much about them. I mean, so I'm curious to see what happens there with them um, as we head forward there. So a lot to talk about, you know, when you look at girls track and field as we head into the um, later months of April and the May. Um, you know, and then, of course, in the June, which is the postseason, um, a lot of t things in the um, in this division there. Um, let's go to some... Let's go to boys lacrosse. I mean, like, obviously, boys lacrosse, people talk about, um, yes, there's a, there's some, several schools that do unify. Um, obviously, you look at, um, you know, you got to look at Clarkston. You got to look at Adams. You got to look at Lake Orion and Stony Creek. Um, I think when you look at the teams in lacrosse who could do the most damage, I mean, yes, Clarkson and Lake Orion are going to be the two teams to talk about. But I just think that, you know, you know, Lake Orion, well, coach and coach Ron Herbert, um, who's just got the most wins in state history, um, by the way. Um, congratulations to Coach Herbert um, for achieving that mark. Um, I think when you look at Clarkson, though, Clarkson's going to be very interesting. I mean, Clarkson's a tough team to watch. They're always solid in lacrosse. Um, Adams, we know they're a good team. We know they're very good. Um, I'm curious to see with them is how Adams, you know, handle, you know, how Adams handle success. That's the big question. Um, Stony Creek, um, last year, biggest surprise. I think being in the white really helped them last year. Um, being in the red is going to be a little bit of a challenge for them this time around. Um, just going to be curious to see how Stony Creek does, um, this year. And I think they're going to have some ups and downs this year in the division. Um, especially considering that, um, you know, last year's success, um, you know, sometimes it always, they do got experience, but being in a tougher division, um, that's going to be a much difficult challenge, and Stony Creek is going to be in a division with some really, really proven powerhouses in that division there. Um, other teams to watch, Oxford, um, been up and down this year in lacrosse. I'm curious to see how they do this year. Rochester's been another one. Um, you know, West Bloomfield, you know, they've been up and coming. Um, so... <laughs> And then, of course, there's Troy, 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 Athens, both them. Um, really curious to see how this goes. Really, really curious to see how they do. But when I look at the top echelon of lacrosse right now, um, you got to put Clarkston on there. You got to put Lake Orion on there. Um, Adams, you got to put on there. Um, I, I'm curious to see how this is going to go, considering you look at, you know, Last year, Heartland was the first public school was the first public school in the state to win a state title. Of course, the state title in Division One's been dominated by the Catholic League, whether it's been Birmingham Brother Rice or um nobody Detroit Catholic Central. Um, so that's really been where um the power's been in Division One um has been within the Catholic League. You know, and I expect the Catholic League to be very good again this year. I mean, obviously, Birmingham, Brother Rice, and nobody, Detroit, Catholic Central. Both those teams are very solid teams. Um, and I think they're going to pose some big problems for everybody, you know, around the state this year. I think they're going to be that good. Um, and I think they're going to do some damage this year, both those two teams. Um, so that's really what to watch for, um, obviously, there. So that's something to really talk about. Um, when you look at it here, um, let's look at, of course, um, let's go now from boys across to girls across. I still think it's going to be, you know, when you look at girls across, people look at, okay, you got Birmingham United or Bloomfield Hills. You know, those are the two teams that 
you have to judge yourselves with against. And honestly, you know, that's a good com- comparison is when you do that. I think honestly, when you really look at it, um, I mean, Bur- I mean, Blueberry Hills last year, they've had a lot of success. Um, Birmingham United, we know they've had a lot of success. And I forgot to mention Birmingham United in, in soccer. I mean, and also in boys lacrosse. Um, they're a solid team as well, so I forgot to mention them. So apologies to the Birmingham United Bulldogs, of course. Um, they're a combination of Groves and Seaholm. We're going to talk enrollment lists coming up in about, in about um, five minutes, in about ten minutes here. Um, a lot of interesting storylines there on the um, enrollment list. We're going to talk about that um, on this show. Um, bottom line is when I look at girls lacrosse, people are going to say, okay, if you look at who you think is the third best team in girls lacrosse, um, you could say Lake Orion's a team that, to be mentioned. Clarkson's another one. Um, Oxford, you know, they've been up and coming. Um, Stony Creek, we know how good they are. Adams has been solid. Rochester, you know, they've been solid. West Bloomfield has had their moments. I mean, like, you know, girls lacrosse, it's interesting because you really look at, okay, um, you know, how, how do these teams match up? And how do they perform in these type of games? How do they perform? I mean, curious to see how this is going to go. Uh, but until you – until – you're going to be judged by playing Birmingham United or Bloomby Hills because those, are, I think, are the two best teams in girls lacrosse is those two teams. Um, so really curious to see how this will go uh, when you look at girls lacrosse. Um, but that's where you're judged by, is by those teams. And, you know, it is what it is. Um, girls, I mean, like, let's go to golf now. Of course, when you look at golf, um, Adams, you know, you got to keep an eye on, um, Lake Orient's another one to keep an eye on. I think they could, they could be in prime boost and damage this year. Um, I mean, like, you know, I'm curious to see how this is going to go this year in golf. Um, you know, I don't like, I don't talk a lot of golf. I mean, I don't talk a lot of golf here on the pod. Um, of course, we just had the Masters this weekend. Um, John Rahm, I think, won the Masters, um, shooting a 12 under. Um, so it'd be interesting to see. I mean, I still think Adams and Lake Orion are the two top teams. Troy Athens is another one to keep an eye on for sure. Um, when you look at golf, um, and then of course there's tennis. Um, actually, Clark's another team to watch for this year. Oxford maybe another one to watch. Um. Troy could be another team to watch this year. I mean, like, I mean, they got some good individual golfers as well. Um, and then let's go to tennis. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at tennis, um, I'm curious to see. I mean, yeah, Clarkson's always solid, but Groves is always solid. So is Seaholm. Um, Bloopia Hills, they've, they've, they've had some nice tennis teams in the past. I mean, like, I'm very curious to see how this is going to go this year. Um, in girls, in um, tennis, um, I think it's girls tennis this time. Um, but I'll be very curious to see how it goes. So, you know, we'll see. I mean, we're going to see. I mean, a lot to look at as we head into the um, spring season. So that's my take on all the spring sports right now. I forgot to mention water polo. Um, of course, see home. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, see home groves. Um, you know, are going to be mentioned there. I mean, Lake Orion, Clarkson, Oxford, they all merge into one team um, in um, in water polo. But I still think Birmingham, no, I still think Groves and Seahome are going to be the two top teams to beat in water polo. So we'll see what happens there um, when you look at water polo. So that's my take on the entire spring sports um, throughout the entire um, OAA. Um, of course, I'll have more info on the blog at second of 4650 at bogspot.com. If you want to take a look at it. Um, let's look at the enrollment list now. Of course, obviously, the MHA just released the enrollment list last week. Um, of course, um, Class A is listed at 807 students or above. Class B is between 806 and 380 students. 
um, some really interesting storylines. I mean, people talk about, of course, um, you know, you look at, um, you know, Moses always all in Class A. I mean, you know, when you look at the league in general, you know, the OA is a big, big conference. Um, but you have Harper Woods, Ferndale, and Ferndale University. They're all in Class B. Um, but then when you look at football, you know, a sport like football, um, this is where it gets really interesting because Ferndale and Ferndale University are a co-op team. So Ferndale's got 672 students. And Fernando University's got 642 students. So then you add, that'll equal 1,144 students. 1,144 1, students. That means for football, you're in Division Two, for football. And, you know, for Ferndale, that's the most interesting part of having a co-op. Is you're going to have, and when you merge... DMH is going to look at both your combined schools and they're going to add them up. They do it all the time. They do it in, they do it in hockey. I mean, you look at in lacrosse, you look at, of course, Birmingham Unified. It's got between Groves and Seaholm, 2388. Troy and Troy Athens, Troy Unified, 4328. Berkeley and Royal Oak, that's M1, 2674. And then you have Rochester Unified, um, 3332. Between Rochester and Rochester Adams and Farmington United, you got 2485. Um, so they do combine them, put you in Division One if you are a combined team, which several of these teams are. I mean, but for football's sake, Ferndale and Ferndale University are two teams that are just really, they're really, you know, when you look at those, those two teams, they're merged. But, you know, when you look at the co-op, bottom line is, you know, for playoffs, they're in D2. And bottom line is, I mean, you know, so I'm very curious to see how this division is going to go going forward. Um, something to really keep an eye on um, as we head into the, um, you know, real, as we end the 2023-2024 season. Um, division 1, of course, Troy. Um has the ninth most enrolled school in the state with um twenty two thousand nine with twenty two with two thousand two hundred ninety eight students. Lake Orion is eleventh with two thousand two hundred fifty four students. Clarkston is two thousand two hundred six students, um which is thirteenth, and Oxford Oxford is eighteenth with um two thousand forty nine students. And Troy Athens rounds out the top twenty. In the state of Michigan with 2,030 students. So, you know, when you look at those teams, really no surprises there in Division One with those two teams in the top 20. West Bloomfield has 1,903 students. Rochester, 1,768 students. Bloomfield Hills, 1,739 students. Stony Creek, 1,556 students. Adams with 1,564 students. And South Arson Tech um, wraps up Division One for football with a total of 1,517 students. So when you look at Division One, obviously, you know, you look at, of course, the enrollment list. I mean, Oxford took a big drop from this year to next year. Um, curious to see how that's going to go. But they're still Division One for football. Um, so that's going to be very interesting to watch for. Um, Division two, we know about them. Um, you know, Division two, of course, there's several schools that opted into Division two. Um, Warren D. LaSalle, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's are up in D two for football playoffs. Um, so, but here's the, the OA schools that are in D two. Um, you have Royal Oak with one thousand four hundred forty three students, Farmington with one thousand four hundred sixteen students. Seaholm with 1,279 students. North Farmington with 1,269 students. Berkeley's got 1,228 students. Groves, 1,159 students. We already talked to Ferndale U Co-op with 1,144 students. And, of course, um, Oak Park, um, Rapsworth Division II with 1,135 students. 
Um, when you look at Division Two, you got to look at obviously, of course, if Oak Park were to get in playoffs. I mean, looking at possibly playing a Warren D. The Sow or Orchard Lake St. Mary's type of team, um, that would be really interesting to say the least. There, um, when you look at the possibilities of a OA matchups, there. I mean, Groves, we know how good they are. Seahome, we know how good they are. Of course, Berkeley. Um, you know, Berkeley will be in Division Two for playoffs. Um, very curious to see what happens here when you look at the divisions here. Um, I know Royal Oak. I know Berkeley. Berkeley, both Royal Oak and Berkeley, both got a lot of work to do. Um, when you look at football as we head forward into the season, um, both those two teams, especially Royal Oak, has got a lot of work to do going ahead. Um, Division Three. Um, you have two schools in here. You got Avondale and Pontiac. Um, Avondale will have one thousand. We have one thousand one and fifteen students. Pontiac will have nine hundred thirty-eight students. Um, of course, both these teams are in Class A, obviously. So that'll be very interesting to watch for, as the MHA starts preparing districts and all that for sport like basketball. Um, where I think it'll be very interesting to see how this happens. Um, and then Division Four, of course, Harper Woods back from Division One, where I'm still trying to figure out how they're how they had 1,200 students. Um, they're gonna be in Division Four for football, and in Division in the Class B with 775 students. So when you look at the biggest storylines, Harper Woods dropping from D2. To D four, um, that's always that's gonna be interesting to see. Um, I think if Harper Woods were to get in the playoffs, um, I think they'll have being in the EOA is gonna help them big time because they play a tough enough schedule. Um, I think on the other side of things, you look at a team like um, you know, you look at of course um Avondale and Pontiac, of course, you know both those teams. Don't have football coaches yet. Avondale's got a great chance to get back into the playoffs. It's going to come down to is what coach is it going to be at Avondale that fits the system there? I mean, that's the big question I have for Avondale going forward there. Pontiac, you know, you got to look at, of course, you know, they, it's very much who's going to be there long term to build the program. I mean, that's the big question. I mean, you lose Ken Wade, that's a big loss for you. Um, but whoever takes over that program, they're going to have some big-time shoes to fill. So that's going to be very interesting to see. I mean, Pontiac hasn't won a game, and it's been, it, I think, been since 2018. I mean, it's been a long while. Um but they got athletes there at Pontiac. They got some great kids there in that in that school over there at Pontiac. Um, new football facility opened up. Um, you know, just some, you know, great facilities over there at Pontiac. Um, but I'm curious to see how um how they're going to compete in Division Three if they somehow get in the playoffs. Um, it'll be a rough road for them, um, especially with the schedule they got. Um, We'll see what happens. I mean, obviously, that's the situation there. Um, Division two, um, I see Berkeley. Berkeley will be should be better. Um, Royal Oak. It's hard for me to trust Royal Oak because, you know, if can they get to the postseason? Because Royal Oak, they're a mess. I mean. Last three year, I mean, last three games, um, they didn't score a point. They didn't score a point. So if you're Coach Colin Campbell, you know, you got to fix that. You know, you got to say, okay, now I, this is my program, you know, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. For Royal Oak, if you want to turn this thing around and be a playoff team, you got to start winning games. You got to start producing results. I mean, when I look at Royal Oak, um, the history, 
the stats. They don't lie. Stats don't lie. And, you know, they can say it's a new team. It's a new start, new era. You know, you just went through this last year. You just went through this last year. You know? Didn't work out, unfortunately. But now you're going to be the one that has to say, okay, you know, you're the one that's got to take all. You know, you got to say, okay, what, are our, what is our expectation at Royal Oak? What is the expectation? Because I think Roy Oak's got a chance to, they can compete with anybody. They can compete with anybody, especially in the gold division. I mean, Ferndale's solid. I think Berkeley's going to be better next year. Um, Admiral, I think, is the team to beat in the division next year. Um, but if you're Roy Oak, you know, and I'm going to be honest with you, you know, you got to come into this season without any expectations. because. You know, you could say all you want. You could, you could, you could say all you want, but bottom line is, you got to start winning some games because history is not on your side, stats aren't on your side. I mean, you got to start winning some games. That's what, it, and you're in Division Two for playoffs, so that's my take on Royal Oak. I mean, they got to start producing results. I mean, Farmington, they do lose. They got, there's, I think Farmington's a solid team. North Farmington, I'm curious to see how they do this year. Um, they got some talent coming back. Depth's a big concern for Coach John Hurstein. Um, and then you look at, um, we've talked Berkeley. I think Berkeley's going to be better this year than they were last year. Groves made the Final Four last year. Um, I think Groves is a team to really watch for. They got a lot of experience back. Um, Seahome. I think Seahome's a team to watch next year. I'm really high on Seahome. Um, Oak Park, curious to see how this team's going to do in the blue. Very, very curious to see how this team's going to do. Because when you look at the Knights, um, this team last year had a lot of a lot of youth, a lot of inexperience, a lot of injuries. Um, you know, and it was a rough year for Coach Greg Carter. I think this year, I think it's going to be better for him. Um, but he is playing a really tough non-conference schedule. So, we're going to see with Royal Oak. I mean, we're going to see how this goes with them. Oh, sorry, with Oak Park. We're going to see how this goes with them. I think Oak Park can be better. I think Oak Park's going to be better. Um, we're going to see how this goes. Um, and then let's go to Division One. Um, Troy and Troy at... I mean, Troy... When you look at Troy... One of the biggest enrolled schools in the state. And you've made the playoffs the last, you know, two years. But it's kind of hard for me to judge them. Because when you look at Troy, you know, you look at their enrollment and say, and you should say, okay, you guys should be playing Lake Orion. You guys should be playing Clarkston. You guys should be playing Oxford. You guys should be playing West Bluefield. But... They're not. Um, and that's kind of a hard sell for me. Yes, Troy's got some athletes. I mean, Parker Vandenberg, Jalen Peacock making the make I mean coming back. Um Nolan Block at running back. Um but I can't trust Troy when it comes to their non conference, when it comes to how are you gonna get in the playoffs? I mean, your strength of schedule. Look at when you got in the playoffs last year, you played Southfield. Look what happened. Southfield's schedule basically took over that game. That was the difference. Southfield played a vicious schedule. Troy didn't. And look what happened. Troy Athens, I think they're going to be better this year. I mean, I like what they're going. I like what, I like what they're doing. Um, but like I said, same, same thing with Troy, you know, they've got to play, um, you know, they're the same as Troy. I think they got to play the bigger schools. I mean, we'll see how this goes. I mean, that's just my take on it. Um, and then you look at Southfield Arts and Tech for me, when I look at them, it's now or never for the Warriors. 
Here's why. Everybody on that team, the majority of that team, senior heavy. I mean, last year, you had a golden opportunity against Troy Castec, a team you beat earlier in the year, and you lost that game. You lost that game on your home field. I mean, for Southfield, it's now or never. Because, you know, especially because when you look at next year for a and they lose everybody. They lose everybody. And I don't see really anybody in that pipeline coming up. So, that's a concern when I look at Southfield. Uh, Bloopy Hills, I mean, like, they do lose some talent as well. I mean, here's the other Blackhawks do this year. Um, you do CJ Jackson, that's going to be a big loss. Um, quarterback situation is interesting. Keep an eye on. Curious to see what Coach Dan Laurie has. Really curious. Um, Adams, curious to see how their quarterback situation is going to be. I mean, yeah, Brady Prescorn's back. It's going to be a big deal. But can Adams sustain what they had last year? That's the big question. That's going to be the big question for Adams. Stony Creek, yeah, they lose a lot of talent from a year ago. Um, but you know Nick Marlowe's system, the armor up culture there. He's built over there. Um, he'll have those he'll have those kids ready over at Stony. I think they're gonna be solid. I really do. Rochester, when you look at Rochester, um, I think they're gonna be solid. They're gonna be very interesting to watch too. Um, before I mentioned Division Four, Harper Woods. I think Harper Woods is better than people think. Um, I'm very curious to see how their depth situation is going to be over the, for the Pioneers. Very curious. I think they're going to be a good team this year. Really do. I also think Avondale will be as well in Division Three. So, we'll see how that goes. Um, but back to Division One. Um, <laughs> um, Oxford. I think Oxford's going to be better. I mean, <laughs> people are going to say, well, why do you say, I mean, Oxford's, um, Sophomore class is very good. I mean, they're going to be juniors. They got another year of experience. Got Dom Cassisi, Jake Champagne. Um, you got, like, Logan Johnson's the running back. He's had a nice year. I think Oxford could surprise some people next year. I mean, their defense, big question mark. Depth's a big question mark for Oxford. Um, so we'll see what happens there with them. West Bloomfield. Um, new coach and Zach Kilbers. Um, I don't really see any changes with them. Um, I'm going to be flat out honest with you. I mean, I know I know Tyler Klett very well at Civic Center TV. Um, I don't really see anything changing with West Bloomfield. I mean, I think they're, I mean, with Hilbert's taking over the program, I really just don't see any changes with West Bloomfield. I, I really don't. And that's pure honesty right there. They're going to be good again. Um, Clarkston, when you look at the Wolves, um, you got you got the Bowman Twins, obviously. Um, Desmond Steffens. Um, John Wincesco, that linebacker. Um, I, it's hard for me to trust his defense. I mean, you got Grayson Clark, likely to be your starting running back. Quarterback's a big question mark. But I still can't trust his defense. I mean... I'm curious to see what changes they do. I mean, Clarkson's defense was okay. I, I, I wouldn't say great, but they've got a lot to prove next year. They got a lot to prove next year. That's for sure. And then there's Lake Orion. I mean, when you look at the Dragons, a lot of experience coming back. That says a lot when you look at the Dragons. Um, obviously, with... Um, you know, when you look at Tristan Hill back, Billy Roberson, um, Donovan, Donovan, Donovan Novak, um, you got, um, I mean, you got, um, I mean, like Raymond Payne, I mean, like, I mean, then your defense really good with Caden DeGreffrey at linebacker, um, your line should be solid by Kyle Purdy, um, your secondary looks solid. If you're coach, if you're like Oregon coach and athletic director Chris Bell, um, you gotta be looking forward to the season because this team is loaded with proven experience. 
Um, this team got in the playoffs last year. Um, last team in Division One. You know, playing that vicious schedule. Schedule's not as tough as them um, as in years past, but it looks manageable. I think they could do some damage this year. I, I think Lake Orion could be a team that. I think when you look at the teams, all the OA right now, they could be the most dangerous team in this league because of their experience. Because of their experience. I am very curious to see how how Chris Bell does as a play caller. You know, as the um, you know, as a play caller. You know what I mean? He did a really nice job last year, but I would like for them to see more balance. I mean, that's honesty there. I mean, last year, run-heavy team. If they can be more balanced, you know, with the pass, then I think this team could be, could be very, very good. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens as we head forward. Of course, that's my take on the enrollment sheet. Also for football situations, of course, when you look at basketball, obviously, Ferndale's in Division Two, Harper Woods will be in Division Two, Ferndale University will be in Division Two, um, for the playoffs. Um, when they release the districts coming up in June. Um, so that's something to really look for. Um, especially when you look at the basketball districts being released. Um, just very curious, especially now the enrollment sheet now released and all that. Um, now I got to keep my eye on the co-ops, obviously. Um, but also the teams that want to move up. I mean, particularly like a Birmingham Marion or a um, you know, who not. I mean, like. Doesn't have a lot of kids, but they want to move, probably want to move up to Class A in Division One, you know. So I would expect that to happen, you know, especially in girls' athletics, obviously. So that's something to really keep an eye on as we um go forward. So we'll see what happens going forward. Before I am signing off here, um, wish everybody best of luck. Um, you know, this week of course competing. Um, we're in the middle of spring season. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward there. As we head forward there. Okay, now make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Lots to look at, obviously. So we'll see what happens as we head forward as we head into the season. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Um, take care. God bless. And I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care, and I will see you next week. God bless everyone.